You know, I've been trying to figure out for a while why I don't feel the same type of emotional attachment and connection to the WWE that I once did. Why I don't feel as passionately about it from a standpoint of watching the actual product and being engrossed by it and enthralled by it. And I've been thinking about this for a while. And I started to realize, I think, what one of the major problems is I could talk about booking, and I could talk about this, and I could talk about that. But at the end of the day, what I realized is, is that I really don't have that guy in WWE today. I don't have that guy that is my guy that sucks me in when he's on television. He sucks me in with his matches. He sucks me in with his promos. He gets me invested with his mannerisms, his actions, his way of speaking, his way of working, what have you. I realize, as I'm sitting there thinking about it, that I don't have that guy in the WWE today. I don't have that guy that I feel I can relate to well. I don't have that guy that I can identify with. I don't have that guy that I can be proud of saying that that is my guy. You know, because when I think about it, I've been a wrestling fan. I know I say this a lot, but fuck it, I'm going to do it again. I've been a wrestling fan for almost 30 years years now. And I think about the different periods of time in professional wrestling. There's actually been multiple guys that were my guys during that time. When I think back to when I was a little kid growing up in the 80s watching the WWF, you know, I had Hogan. I had the Macho Man. I had the Ultimate Warrior. I had Jake the Snake Roberts. I had the Junkyard Dog and so many others. But those would be like my guys. The Hogans, the Warriors, the Savages, the Jake the Snakes, the Junkyard Dogs. Those were my guys. Those were the guys that I marked out for. Those were the guys that were my icons. They were my heroes. They were the ones that I enjoyed or they were the ones that I looked up to, what have you. You know, as you transition and you got more to the Attitude Era, you still had that guy, those guys that I could relate to, that I could get down with if you would. You had guys like The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin and Jericho and, yeah, even somebody like a Kane and a Mick Foley. You know, they had these guys that there was no shame in my game being fans of them. I was proud to be fans of them, and they did a tremendous job over the years of entertaining me and getting me even more emotionally invested in the product and what they were doing. And then even over into the Ruthless Aggression era, kind of, and a little bit after, I still had guys like The Undertaker, who you could argue has been a guy for many years, but I put him here. You know, even with the Reign of Terror, people like John Cena and Triple H and Randy Orton, what have you, I still had guys that I was into, guys that I wanted to see, guys that entertained me, guys that I was proud to say were my guys, guys like The Undertaker and Batista, yes, and surprisingly, yes, Jeff Hardy, Eddie Guerrero, he who shall not be named. There were plenty of guys that I could still get down with watching. There were plenty of those individuals that made me proud to be a WWE fan, that I knew no matter what, I was primarily always going to be entertained by something that they did. And then we kind of get to the PG era. And the last guy that I really had like that was maybe The Miz. He was the guy maybe that I could most closely identify with, he could relate to. I could see some similarities in us. You know, I'm kind of a D-bag. I'm arrogant. I'm a bit of an ass. Some people like me. Some people hate me. You know, most people hate me but like to hate me. You know, you get what I'm saying. Now, I could actually get down with The Miz. You know, this was a guy that had paid his dues, had worked his way up. And, you know, I kind of felt like I was along for the journey, along for the ride. And when he got to the top, I thought it was really cool and I was okay with it. You know, I was proud to be a fan of The Miz. But, of course, when I see over the past couple of years what they've done to The Miz, they've done such a terrible job of following up on the fact that this guy once beat John Cena in the main event of WrestleMania 7 as a heel world champion to maintain his status as world champion. They've now made it to the point where when I see The Miz on TV, I don't even really care. I take a pass, and that's sad. So now I sit here and I look at it and I'm like, I don't have anybody. Where's the guy that people can identify with me being a fan of? Where's the guy that I can identify with being a fan of? Where's that guy that makes me say no matter what, if I hate everything else in the WWE, that's my guy. I had that for a little bit, I think, with The Miz, and now that's gone.
And when I look at it, frankly, with the current kind of top guys, they all lack appeal to me for one reason or another in the WWE. You know, when I talk about The Miz, some of you, a lot of you had that with a CM Punk. But a CM Punk is now gone. So he lacks appeal because he's not there. And I've kind of not liked the way he conducts himself in some ways, but he was an entertaining guy, but he was never going to be like a schleg daddy guy, if you get what I'm saying. But I think you guys understand what I'm getting at here. You know, for a lot of you, that was your guy. Maybe you transitioned on to somebody else that I'll talk about in a second. But it affects the way you enjoy the product because, again, if you don't have that guy, you know, you focus on everything else and you realize how bad it is, where at least if you have that one guy, you get kind of stuck in that cocoon and it makes everything else look better, or at least this makes that look that much more awesome. But CM Punk, not a lot of appeal to me. And he's gone. Daniel Bryan. I'm happy for him. I'm happy for Daniel Bryan's fans. But at the end of the day, he's just not somebody that I want to identify with being a big, huge fan of. I like him. I think he's a good performer. I'm a fan of some of his work. But it's kind of like at a distance. Maybe it's because, in part, because so many of you that are here on the Internet that talk about professional wrestling love Daniel Bryan, and I don't want to be associated with that, and I don't want to fit in with the crowd. That could be part of it, to be fair. But at the end of the day, there's just not something appealing to me. There's just something not fully registering to me with Daniel Bryan to the point where I want to say, I'm a Daniel Bryan guy. I'm an American Dragon guy, damn it. And it would also be gimmick infringement for Marcus Smart, I believe. Now, I'm sure as hell not going to be a fan of John Cena. Not only does he not appeal to me, does he not appeal to the adult male demographic, I just don't think he's in an interesting, compelling character. And he hasn't been for years. It's the same type of crap with him. He's got to go over every sense of the way. He's got to be consistently pounded down your damn throat. Everything is always positioned to make John Cena look so superior to everything else, where he is nothing more than an opportunist and a, and a beneficiary of situation and circumstance that the WWE has put him in for almost the past decade now. And it's gotten to the point where he has, do you realize this, has been at the top longer in the WWE than Hulk Hogan was. And he's never, ever drawn anywhere near Hulk Hogan money, brother. So there's no way in fucking hell that John Cena is ever going to be my guy when I watch the WWE. Sure, I might joke about the Cenas and the Ortons and the Triple Hs when it comes to the Breakfast Club. I have my own fun with it. But you realize sometimes that's parody, right? You realize that's satire, right? That's me trying to have fun with something that pisses me off, right? I think some of you get it. Some of you enjoy it. And some of you clearly don't and have no clue. I'm never going to be a Randy Orton fan. I once was a Batista fan. I do like Batista as a heel, but you know, you're talking again about a guy in his mid-fucking 40s. No more appeal to me. Been there, done that, seen it, next. Triple H, been there, seen it, done it, next. You know, a guy like Sheamus, books so much in a lot of ways like a John Cena, nothing interesting, nothing compelling about him when there should be something interesting and compelling about him, and that's a shame. So none of the top guys in WWE have any appeal to me whatsoever, frankly. I could be entertained by some of the stuff that they do, but that doesn't mean that their characters or their performances, by and large, get me invested in the product. They don't sit there and jump out to me and make me proud to be a WWE fan. I hope I'm making sense here. And I think in order for my long-term enjoyment and the long-term success, frankly, of OTR Central too, at some point in time, I've got to have a top guy, or I've got to have a couple of guys that I can get behind and root for in the WWE. It will increase my enjoyment of the product, and it will also allow you, the Oterra Central viewer, to have an idea of what I might feel about certain guys and know that, hey, Schleg Daddy's with this guy and that guy. This is his guy. This is what I expect. Da, 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 da. I don't have an identity. And right now, as a WWE fan, I feel like I really don't have an identity. So who should be my top guy? I'm going to throw this out there to you. I'm going to give you some names. You let me know. I don't know. It's not going to be any of the top guys that are currently there. I've already named them, so too bad. Snooze, you lose. Should it be somebody like a Roman Reigns? Frankly, that's Summer's top guy. You know, there is a certain appeal there for Roman Reigns. You know, he's from that Samoan lineage. But again, I'm somebody that likes an individual that can talk. And frankly, Roman Reigns right now can't really talk. He can't talk my interest into a match. 
He can't talk me into being compelled about what he does. I think he's good, but he's got a long way to go. You know, a guy like a Bray Wyatt. A Bray Wyatt has a lot of the things that I look for. A unique, compelling, interesting character who does things differently, is a tremendous talker on the mic, tells a great story. But is he going to be the guy long term that the WWE is really going to get behind? Or are they just going to make him seen as jobber bitch and then they're always going to be up and down with him? You know, Cesaro is a guy that I like going back to his ROH days. He was one of the few reasons that I liked anything about ROH was because of him and Chris Hero as the kings of wrestling. I loved Claudio Castagnoli, and I'm a fan of his, and I'll always be a fan of his. But is he really my guy material? Is he that guy of all people in the WWE for me? I don't know. Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, Big E, Wade Barrett maybe? You know, but even with a Wade Barrett, again, you sit there and you get worried about it. Every time they push him and they repackage him, they do a little bit of something with him, and then he's gone for a few months, and then they're back doing the same old shit again. Maybe a Wade Barrett should have been that guy for me by now. Here's a guy with that look that could do a little bit in the ring, and he can talk. He has a lot of that package, like a Bray Wyatt does. But it's part of me being fearful that every time they tease is doing something legitimate with a Wade Barrett that they're going to pull the rug out from under him and sabotage the whole damn thing and go back to square one again, that keeps me, I think, from getting all the way emotionally invested in them. Similarly to like a Cody Rhodes, you know, you look at the Usos, and as much as I like the Usos and enjoy the Usos, they're a part of the WWE's tag team division. Now, how much does that tag team division really mean in the grand scheme of things to the WWE? <coughs> so, excuse me, I look here, and I sit there and say to myself, who should be my guy? I might lean towards like a Roman Reigns or a Bray Wyatt or a Cesaro, maybe a Big E, a Wade Barrett, a Cody Rhodes. But for every reason I could say to get really behind them, I could find one or two reasons maybe to not get really behind them, if nothing else, to protect myself from inevitable disappointment that would come from the WWE as these guys would get knocked down the ladder by a Cena and Orton, a Triple H, or what have you. So none of the top guys appealed to me. And I just don't have those guys that appealed to me the same way that the WWE had guys that once did, whether it was the Undertakers of the Worlds or the Rock and Austins, the Foley's, the Jericho's, the freaking Hogan's, Macho Man's, Warriors, Jake's, JYD's. You know, I think for me as a professional wrestling fan and as a WWE fan, that's really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for those guys, those guys that I could get behind, those guys that I could blindly root for, that I could almost feel like a kid again a little bit and just be able to sit back and be entertained by them and strap up, and that sounded wrong, and go along for the ride, if you will. That's what I'm looking for out of the WWE, and I hope they give me that out of some of these guys. And like I said, I'm opening this up to you. I want to know who you think should be my top guy, or who maybe should be a collection of a couple of my top guys in the WWE. It can't be everybody. And please don't just sit there and make them all guys under 6 feet and 190 pounds. You could give me some diversity. You could sit there and give me, you know what I mean? You could almost call it like the Schleg Daddy's uh, Fortunate Four Part Two or some shit like that. I don't know. Would it be Roman Reigns? Is it Bray Wyatt? Is it Cesaro? Is it Rollins? Is it Ambrose? Is it Big E? Is it Wade Barrett? Is it Cody Rhodes? Is it the Usos? Is it a few of those guys? Let me know what you think. Let me know down below in the comments section. And let me know if you have this kind of similar problem as an adult male fan of the WWE today or even as an adult female fan, female fan excuse me, of the WWE today. Do you find yourself not being as emotionally invested in the product as you feel maybe you could be or should be in part because when you think about it you realize you really don't have those individuals or those people that you really can get behind and really become engrossed in everything that they do in the WWE. Let me know down below.